mouse can sometimes feel like the straw that broke the camel's back. But it doesn't have to be. A straw bale construction is roughly three times as efficient as a conventional one and can reduce energy costs by up to 75%. Straw bale buildings have proven to be as durable as other types of buildings. The straw bale shed at the Toronto Botanical Gardens is a physical demonstration of an environmentally friendly building. Check it out. Two-thirds of the world's population in habitat buildings made of earth. Straw bale buildings have proven to be as durable as other types of buildings. They have better fire ratings than standard construction, great insulation ratings and are resistant to rodents and other pests, including the big bad wolf. A straw bale structure is just as durable, if not more durable, um, than a conventional home. They're actually much more resistant to fire in that the bales are uh, very tightly wound and packed. And when they're within the wooden framework, um, it it's, like, it's like burning a phone book is what it's comparable to. In terms of moisture, there are um, things built into the construction to um, prevent moisture from getting into the straw. So for example, um, the cement layer on the outside, once you've got the, the lumber with the infill of straw followed by the cement. Um, also, we tend to build our straw bale structures on a uh, concrete base, so it's lifted above the ground. One of the biggest misconceptions around a straw bale home is that it's not as strong, it's weak. It's like blow your house down in uh, the wolf and the three pigs, but this is completely untrue. Um, it's, it's very strong. They build straw bale structures in areas where hurricanes are common. Innovative and earthquake or hurricane resistant building ideas are crucial to getting affected countries back on their feet. And thanks to the Pakistan Straw Bale and Appropriate Building Organization, people in the Kashmir region of Pakistan have safe, affordable homes. In 2005, about 70,000 people were killed there after a deadly earthquake. Part of the reason, homes made from concrete, bricks and mortar blew up into deadly rubble. Most people consider it worthless. But to the children of earthquake disasters, it's safer than this, stronger than this, and warmer than this. For them, it's an answer to a prayer. For the poor around the world, safe, affordable shelter is all around them. The organization's mission is to adapt, apply and transfer straw bale methods to protect and improve the lives of the poor, especially in earthquake and extreme weather regions of the developing world. Their houses are up to 80% more energy efficient at about 50% of the cost of conventional earthquake resistant construction. To date, 11 straw bale buildings have gone up. This kind of sustainable home can also be utilized in big urban settings like Toronto and may just be what the future holds for homeowners. Um, I think that having, building more straw bale homes or structures in an urban setting is um, extremely possible. Um, I think it's a, it's a way to go for the future as um, we run out of both land space and materials for uh, building our homes, lumber, uh, trees, all of these so-called sustainable products that we use are becoming harder to, to come across, becoming more expensive as we use products such as plastic, plasters, insulations that are man-made um, when a house is built and then torn down or what have you and a lot of this material ends up in a landfill site. We can prevent that with the use of environmentally sound structures such as a straw bale structure. This garden shed is much more than just a storage unit. It's a green water capturing machine thanks to its innovative roof. It's ecologically friendly in the sense that um, we don't have to water it and at the same time we can collect water from the roof via a rain barrel at the bottom of the drainage system and then we can use that water uh, for planting around the building if we have to. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now, Home Alive on the grounds of the Everdale Environmental Learning Centre is a house that thinks, drinks and breathes. Home Alive is a straw bale house and it was originally uh, featured in the National Canadian Home Show. 
demonstrating a variety of technologies including solar and uh, high, highly insulated walls and ceilings. Not only that, it has one of the best water capturing systems. And if you're building green, great. But why not take it one break further by reducing your home's water footprint? Have you ever wondered how much water goes down the drain each time you take a shower or throw in a load of laundry? For the average US home, it's close to 1,060 liters a day. More than half of that can be used for irrigation instead of fresh tap water. Why waste drinkable water on your yard when dishwater will do instead? Water catchment system is where you take the rainwater from the roof of your building or your house and you store it in a tank, above ground tank or an underground cistern for use in the uh, gardens or inside your buildings for things like toilet flushing and laundry. It's called grey water. Simply put, it's getting the most out of your household water by reusing it. The definition of grey water is all the wastewater from your house except for the toilets. Talk about going the extra green mile at Home Alive. The toilet is, is a composting toilet. It's a Sunmar toilet. And so the toilet is not connected to a, any sort of septic system or the grey water treatment. The, the grey water is taking the showers, the kitchen sink, and it's going through a small settling tank. It's a variation on a septic tank. And then it's going through a horizontal flow constructed wetland. Basically, it works like this. Rain hits the roof, the dust and debris is filtered out by a small tank. This is called the first flush. Once the water is filtered, it's collected in an underground cistern. From there, it goes through a sand filter and ultraviolet light, which are inside the house. That water is then used for everything in the home. Once that water is used and goes down the drain, it ends up in a wetland, is treated and then infiltrated into the ground. In this house, the grey water is not reused. The overflow from the wetland goes into the trenches around the house and then goes back into the soil. And... In a city, uh, quite a lot of electricity and energy is used to deliver water and to treat wastewater. Maybe of, of the electricity that a municipality will purchase, one third can be for pumping drinking water and another third for blowing air or treating wastewater. If you can uh, reuse water within your property, you're avoiding bringing the municipal water from a distant treatment plant. And although you will consume some energy in the pump that your system might use, or hopefully it's gravity feed, it's probably less than the city is used to deliver that water. The quantity and quality of water at the local level is becoming more and more of an issue. We will always need high quality water to drink, that's for sure. But looking ahead to the future, we have some new goals uh, for our water and wastewater infrastructure and these include uh, lowering energy use which is connected to greenhouse gas productions. Although greenhouse climate change is causing droughts and water shortages we have to look at the root causes of that and um, by locally reusing water and also not using the highest quality water for all purposes we can uh, make the, the system more energy efficient. Going green? The last straw? I think not. Each material used in the garden shed was chosen to minimize impact to the environment during its harvesting and manufacturing and to provide the highest level of energy efficiency over the lifespan of the building. Materials were purchased locally and, where possible, recycled products were utilized. I don't